Hey yo together and very welcome to another coaching session. Looks fine so far for me. Today again with Smite. So let's get this rolling. Let's see. Hello? Hello? Hey, how's it going, Alex? Uh pretty damn good. Alex. And for you? Alex is your name, right? Yes. Okay. Alright. So I just need to make you a little bit louder. Okay. okay. I think it should be fine now. Okay. Good. Nice. So let's see. There you go. Your TVT was quite wild, I have to say. That was a really weird TVT. TVT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... I find that almost all of my TVTs, because I would really like to do a um, a uh, Rax Gas expand, like you were mentioning last time. Uh huh. Uh, and I tried that a few times on the ladder, and it's just ev everybody goes two gas, at least in diamond. Uh, mm -hmm. That it's yeah, it's tough. So so I kind of just fell back to doing that um, double Reaper with Cyclone, and then kind of feeling out the game. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Hmm, it's it's difficult. I can imagine. I sometimes lose to stuff like that as well. But then it's because I didn't scout properly, nor react in time. Uh -huh. So if you if you know what's coming, basically, then you should have enough time to react in time. So uh -huh. when he's on your front door, that you still can defend and be massively ahead. Just because yeah. you went for the expansion. But of course the uh, 111 with two gases early on works as well. It's 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 different. I have I have to say if you if you did watch for example uh, Gumiho versus I think TY GSL, then they had a best of seven and four out of six games. Or seven, at least a lot of games, like minimum half of them were proxy stuff with Reaper, Benji, Cyclone, I don't know. Uh -huh. So a real standard TVT seems almost impossible nowadays. At least yeah. that's what I have encountered so far. Yeah, same, same, same at the lower levels. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's not a big difference. What I like is that you get the SAV going for the scouting with the barracks coming up for you, so that's that's good. So the timing is there. So now you, you even scout the, the factory, which is nice, which will come down right now. Yeah. So you know, okay, definitely 111 and potentially no proxy. It could be that he will proxy the starport, starport later, but... Mm -hmm. Mm. So you also don't see any Reaper, which is a good sign for you, so he's banking up a lot of gas early on. And you can see he has way too much gas banked up, so that's always unusual already. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, nobody goes for Marines if he wants to get aggressive, unless it's for a big push, but still then... Mm, I don't know. It feels a little bit weird, you know, with the Reaper and the grenades, you, you have just so much more mobility than with the with the marines. Oh, almost get the marine. Um, I did see in this game you didn't quite probably produce units, so your macro can still be improved a lot. Yeah, yeah absolutely, especially in TVT. Yes. Uh, I, I feel like with TVT there. There's so many things I have to be looking out for in the early game, uh, and then into the mid game as well. That um, my macro falls behind. Yes, um, I'm not sure if you did put the barracks, the starport, and the factory in the same control group. What I just saw is that you later on very often didn't produce any medivacs at all. While you had zero medivax on the field as well, which is pretty damn bad because every stim will hurt you so much. 
Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right about So they're all on the same control group. Okay. Um, five. But I often get in this bad habit of um, forgetting to cycle through okay. each, each uh, production. So okay. I'll, and so I'll just keep making things out of my barracks. And then I also forget to make siege tanks mm -hmm. as well. Yes, I see. It's just, so uh, it's, it's effectively I'll just have be making uh, marines and marauders and that's it. Okay. Uh, I see. Yeah, that's that's one thing where you should get uh, slowly but surely your mind on to cycle through. It's like the same with, not exactly the same, but quite the same with the upgrades. It also helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't need to cycle through there. You could, of course. Um, but it, it really depends. Okay. Um, so far you're not doing a bad job at all. It's, it's okay. Mm, you still seem to have not a very clear build order because you have 300 gas banked up now. That's a lot. And I don't know how you want to spend it in this position. So some some kind of may, maybe a star for the super late I, I don't know let's let's yeah, have a look. I, I oh my, yeah um, oh god look at that app. oh my god okay so let's see let's just have a look not to blame you but to to show you your potential okay now now your factory finishes and you have because of the double gas enough Minerals and gas to produce the starboard immediately this this SUV producing the factory should throw down the starboard Especially if you want to counter his build which will rely also on a 111 You want to get out potentially a raven then a viking or double viking or what you later do viking liberator against this tanks S something like that and now you we are at 230 which is a nice time and let's see how long it takes you to produce the starport. Even with the cyclone and 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 the 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 supply depot you build, which you don't ri need right now, it could have built, been built like ten seconds later, would be fine as well. Because mm -hmm. the cyclone will take more time than a depot to finish, and you only can produce two units at a time with the commands and the barracks as well. So you would have had a little bit more time. But still then the starport is like late for, what was it, 2.30? You see, half a minute already it could have been, yeah, basically done by now, almost. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is drop my natural. Okay. Yeah, see, this is, this is the thing. You either go for a uh, Rex gas expand or you go for a... Uh, one gas Rex expand where you go gas first, which you can do. So the command center is before the factory, or you go with two gas, but then you need to throw down the starport right next to I the see. factory. Okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't need the second gas at all. So either yeah, stick with fine. one gas and go for the expand, or two gas and go for the one one one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will just be <clears throat> not efficient at all. Okay. As you can see, still no starport, and his starport is done now. He's supply cap, which is bad. I don't oh, I, I don't know why he was going for uh, planetary at his natural. That's something I've never seen for a, yeah. a long yeah. time. It's it's a little bit weird. So here you trade quite nicely against the marines. Awesome. So if you would have followed the one 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 plan then you would have been ahead already. You cancelled his command center. Even if you just start your command center now, which would be perfectly... I mean, if you are with a 111, it depends a little bit on the... Yeah, maybe... Yeah, no, it, it really depends on how, how much you want to commit to it. But still then, if you just started now, you are still ahead. You are ahead one worker, you are even in an army. Your, your starport would be ready. So, but but what I want to focus here is, mm, you saw that he was going for uh, two gases, and you saw the factory. So mm -hmm. probably use the Reaper to jump up here, and don't go in with the Cyclone before the Reaper confirms it's safe. Right now okay. you're just wasting your units, as you can see. Tank 
Bam, double kill. Yeah, I lose both because of that. And the Reaper doesn't get you much value later on. Sure, the grenades can be awesome against small pokes. If you do a push out with like 8 marines, a tank, a liberator, and you fight against 10 marines, then the grenade can be awesome to split the enemy marines and give you the upper uh -huh. hand. But other than that, it doesn't add too much value, especially on a map like this where there's only one entrance for the Reaper to jump up. Mm -hmm. Which is basically the ramp and this cliff and still you yeah. need to go through the natural which will most likely be spotted So the Reaper doesn't grant you much value other than This little hope for <coughs> scouting and maybe head of it on the Xenara watchtower So rather throw the Reaper away and keep the expensive cyclone which will be at least useful up to the mid game Where then it loses massively in value. This is why you don't get many cyclones in any matchup basically. They are nice for a push out, maybe for some safety early on, for a meat shield and that's it. That's the sad thing about Cyclones, they are not really really good so far. What's that? Cyclones are not a really good unit oh, so far. Yeah. yeah. So... So just, just getting some move meant some notes down so now you retreat completely back which is fine mm, you could potentially have sieged up on top of this ramp so that he needs to funnel through the ramp not mm. granting him the whole area you're giving him right now yeah on your doorstep so a little bit on on you could work a little bit on your Decision making and position. So I don't know if I saw the the um, <coughs> the banshee or not, but mm. I guess my fear of um, sieging up at the ramp is that if if I did see the banshee, then I wouldn't want to siege up so close to the ramp because I want to kind of get back to my base where I can drop some turrets. But if I didn't yeah. see the banshee, then I could be afraid that if I sieged up on the ramp and he had a medevac, then he would poke that ramp and then. He would just load everything up and jump into my main. Um, yes. That's... So in either situation, I'd be kind of hesitant to mm -hmm. to try to to take a strong position so far away, even though it's a, it is a yes. stronger position so far away from my nav. So that's what would have been the either the Reaper for. So if the Reaper, just in case the Reaper would have survived, mm, what you could have done right here. So now you retreat back. And you know you need all those units to defend, so you retreat mm -hmm. with everything. But the Reaper you could have sent to a Xenara Watchtower, spotting his entire army, potentially the Banshee. And this works because the Reaper is so fast you can then, after it confirmed the size of the army of your opponent, jump back the, the cliff right here, jump up the cliff right here, and be on to the defense again, just in time. Uh -huh. That's what the Reaper could have been for um, Cyclone. With the Cyclone you could have sa more safer um, hold the ramp. Because you have lock on against Banji for extra damage. You have a good meat shield. Stuff like that. So, But in this case, yes, maybe it would, it would uh, it was better to retreat back. Still then, I think with better macro and better timings, you would have had more than enough stuff to defend on the ramp. It was just a thought for normally... Not particularly this season, I would say. Uh, but okay. it's it's either way, it's okay. What I did see in this game is that you were throwing away units like nothing. Mm, you still won because he was playing really not so well. Overall, you had like double the amount of resources lost in this game than him. Oh, really? Yes, it was it was a lot. Yeah. I that's a huge problem with me in TVT is trading efficiently. I seem to do much better at it in the other matchups. Mm -hmm. TVT I, is I, really I, difficult. I see that. Yeah, I, I think that um, people who play at the same level as me, mm -hmm. um, they they just are much better at positioning things in TVT than I am. Ah, uh, okay, I see. This this is some the, the problem with the positioning part in TVT, especially if you play against a composition like Marine Tank, 
it's so fast and mobile, then it's so easy to get caught off guard. Which is the reason why normally in TVT a defensive play doesn't work out too well. Uh -huh. For TY, yes, because he's a super monster as a player, top notch. For anyone else, it's really difficult. Basically, for me, personally, I have figured out that it's difficult, but you need to be in his face, on his side of the map, non-stop. If you give him mm -hmm. time to breathe, if he, if he crosses this line, this is the middle of the map, if you split the map in two pieces, one is your half, the other one is the half of your opponent, and he crosses this line, he is in charge, and he dictates mm -hmm. you your moves. He says, he tells you where you need to defend, and then he can tailor his drops, his push-outs, his entire economy, everything. He, he just is in charge. He can do whatever he wants, basically. He, mm -hmm. he can force you to drop there, or to defend there, have your unit split up. And this is bad. So, normal in TVT, you need to be even more than in TVC, I would say. Be in his face. Uh, be a constant threat to him, force him to make mistakes, and never ever let him be on your side of the map. That's that's the real difficulty in TVT nowadays. So right now he comes on your side of the map again, he's in charge, he dictates you what you need to do, where you need to be. And because you don't have the Xenara Watchtower, you don't know does he go for the natural? Does he go for the for the main base? Maybe he drops. I think you never scouted his main base. So you don't even know if he's playing mech or bio. He plays some weird mix. Okay. So I would say against any other halfway decent Terran. I don't want to be rude to him or to you. But he would have won just because he's doing stuff like that. Containing you. Mm -hmm. Now he can freely expand go up to eight racks, go into into tanks, mech, whatever he wants. And this this is basically a position where it's really difficult for you to break through. Mm, in this case it works because his macro is quite bad. He's on one barracks at eight minutes or almost nine minutes. Normally a Terran would be on eight barracks now and be on 150, 180 supply. Uh -huh. So you would be confronted with like six tanks, six Vikings, forty Marines with one one and stim and combat shields and a bunch of medivacs for dropping and healing. He's getting mm -hmm. turrets, and even if you would have had the same, you are quite. It's it's difficult to break a position like that. That's why I said go and go for the ramp, defend there, because he never should be able to to push you into your base. So now you are with the back on the wall <coughs> and there's almost no room to escape. You still manage to with, with uh, a lot of stim because there's nothing to to buffer for the tanks. But just imagine he would have had 20 marines there to buffer. Uh -huh. You never would have been able to break through like that. So um, let me ask you this then, because um, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, but my big fear in TVT is the doom drop. And so whenever I move out, I always feel as though I, I'm leaving a window for him to just boost into my base. Yes. Um, and I, I do have quite a few turrets up, but I, it never seems like I have enough. when doom <laughs> Against a doom drop, even 10 turrets are not enough. Turrets, they are just there to scare him to not boost in two medivacs. But if he has... Seven or eight, or, and goes full all in with this doom drop. It doesn't matter at all. So for the doom drops, there is just one thing you can do, and it requires a lot of practice and map awareness on your side. So I, I totally understand the fear of doom drops. What you need to to start doing is get the watchtower. So let's let's work on your vision. Mm -hmm. Create vision. So vision is ba basically the the border of your territory. Whatever you see belongs to you. 
and the more you see the more room you have for yourself and the less mm -hmm. he has so vision is also some kind of resource which you need to obtain and manage with the Xenaga watchtowers having marines maybe one marine or a supply depot something to spot on this ramp or maybe on this ramp just just those those key pathways maybe a supply depot right at the edge top of this of this map so you can spot potential uh, medivacs flying across mm -hmm. and also sensor turrets even in in gm in tvt sensor turrets are boss they are so good if you have mm -hmm. a third base a sensor turret like here would be good a sensor turret like here in your main would be nice with some turrets additionally to the marines and supply depots you spread out on the map the more yeah. you see the better it is for you you will later on you want to most most turns will have their army set here on on, on the front of their natural uh -huh. so sometimes throw a scan especially when you want to move out see okay is this where is his army you need to locate his army if it's not at the natural if it's not in the main base and you have a marine poking in at its at his third base for instance and they're still not the the the, the army and you have all this vision set up then it has to be somewhere potentially where you don't look most likely in the medivacs ready for the doom drop and to to counter the doom drop you need to be fast you need medivacs which you did neglect in this game a lot and what you then need to do is drop your marines and your tanks in your base at least at the same time as his doom drop comes in so that uh -huh. it's even you need to to welcome him with uh, him with your marines so, so if there would be 10 marines he wouldn't doom drop with the addition of turrets because they have stim, they kill every medivac before he can unload. That mm -hmm. can be enough, but you need to have those units there in time. So you need to see him in time to react in time, which needs you to have an eye of on, on his army and that needs your vision. Mm -hmm. mm, look for his army, locate it. Uh, react. So you need to react to him, but better would be to dictate him his moves, like they do it to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're on his side of the map with the vision you got, potentially the best vision you can get, then you can totally dictate him, okay, he needs to be aware of your doom drops. He needs to be aware of your push outs and so on. That That's like the reverse side. You need to turn it around. You need to grab the game for yourself. Mm -hmm. mm, needs a lot of practice and it also needs a lot of map awareness, multitasking. But basically you need also good macro to be able to keep up with this army. If you don't have an army to react with, then all the map awareness and multitasking doesn't have any use for you. So for now, I still would think, yeah, go. I, I would say go with the macro, with the with the um, tabbing through the production buildings, uh -huh. and try to get first of all the vision up and running for you. This doesn't need too much multitasking, so you should be fine to implement it in your games so that you can have improvements on your uh, macro and the vision. And then if he tries to dictate you the game with doom drops and being in your face, you know that he's coming and then you can set up flanks, traps, whatever. It doesn't take too much multitasking. Uh -huh. I see. So that's what I would try out for you now. First of all, so work still on macro and create vision. Uh, use the minimap, map awareness. It needs a lot of a lot of practice, so you won't see it be done in like one week. But if you if you have uh, how do I say this uh, a mind 
open for these kinds of things and you actively think about, oh yeah, vision, Xenara Watchtowers, right. Don't use the all army hotkey and you will see more of the map, more of your opponent. He won't surprise you as often with a big doom drop. Right now, you see nothing. If you go to your vision, you see your natural, your main base, that's it. That's yeah. not very good. <coughs> so now you break through any moment and Stim is done. It's good that you wait for Stim. What you also could have done is load up the medivacs. Unload one medivac maybe here and one medivac maybe on your third base to have some kind of flanking maneuver. To just crush him from all three sides, it oh, will yeah. lower your um, casualties. If you come from all sides, then you those tanks will deal far less damage because of the splash minimizing. They will spread their fire out. So flanking maneuver is always important to break out. Here you had enough units, so you could brute force through this wall. Mm, against some other Terran with more units, this assault would have never worked. So you need to yeah. flank. Uh, and you can't do it if he doesn't see it. And most likely he won't, because he's so focused on your doorstep, he will not watch left and right. So just set it up and then go through. Mm -hmm. So here it was, you, you had just way too much stuff. Basically you yeah. could have killed him right now. Um, I think he just he just way. Over, I think all he was doing was focusing on that engagement because he's yes. just so far behind. It, that that's exactly the point. He he never he's still just now on three barracks. That's not good. So he can completely kill the space. Awesome. This is good. And now you are a little bit supply blocked. So what's happening here? Do you have any idle SCVs? No. Okay, I also well, I see. Say I haven't I haven't been using that trick. I, I yeah. I try, but then I always forget. Um, I need to work out a system mm -hmm. of reminding myself mentally. Yeah. The, the the physical system of actually having one uh, idle is simple enough, but the the mental system of yes, I see, I see. Enough. That's that's the difficulty. So basically. I don't know if it helps you to know that every 20 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, or 24, a supply depot is finished. So you have basically 20 seconds. Every 20 seconds you need to... So some people can work with it, like they, they have some, some, some inner clocks constantly ticking, reminding them 12 seconds are, are gone, SCV, SCV mule, 21 seconds are gone, supply depot, 18 seconds are gone, uh, marine. I don't know if that helps you, so that you have thousands of mental clocks ticking, reminding you, okay, I need to do this, that, that. I think this comes with more practice, like muscle memory, you know? Mm -hmm. So just try to actively think about it. I wouldn't try to, to do everything at once. Just pick something you want to improve, like macro idle worker trick. Bam, that's it. No, uh, Okay, and then you try to... to you you can work. You can try to hit the benchmarks mm -hmm. uh, in a letter game, and not focus too much on other stuff. So, sure, you should have map awareness and everything, and drop him. And but it's so much to do at once that if you try to practice everything at once, it will take you a long time to really improve. Mm -hmm. If you just go for, for example, not being supply capped at all, then you will see immediately your macro gets better. And if you have that going for you, then you can see, okay, my macro is now better as well as the supply blocks. Now I can work on my micro while still keeping up my macro if you have that focus. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the benchmarks would be still still important. Um, because 125 supply on 11 minutes is not really good. 
if you want to reach master at some point, either you cheese or it will require you to really work on your macro. You can be maxed out at 10 minutes with 2-2, two two. it is possible. And as you can see, you are still a little bit away from this benchmark. Yeah. So there you can improve a lot. And then you don't need to, to focus too much on, on his planetary. Yes, then, then you can feed in four times the resources he got. It doesn't matter because you are just, you have just so much more than you don't need fancy drops or anything like that. Uh huh. If he, if he, now it's still, Interestingly, so far you're still ahead in the unit loss tab. You lost uh -huh. 400 minerals less and 500 gas less, even a little bit more or less. So that's good. But later on in the game, you will have lost double the amount of his resources. Okay, so you pull back. That's also very important for you to know, never attack a planetary with marines. Never. Never ever. Never. Even with 3-3 three, three marines, it's difficult. The planetary is so strong against marines with repair. I would never, never go with marines into a planetary. Uh -huh. So here you lost quite a lot. It's, it's still fine. You're so far ahead. You have uh, 5 barracks. You could have gone up to 8. And you have way too much gas, which is because of the lack of tank production and medivac production, I guess. Mm, yeah, yes. yeah I'm, I'm doing nothing on those. Exactly. Your mules, you have also a lot of energy on your orbital commands. And I would also, if you're muling, try to mule the freshest base. So in this case, the third base, not the natural. Mm, this has the reason that your natural will not be so fast uh, out of minerals. Uh -huh. It gives you more time until you need to expand again. I see. Basically, you could have won this game right here. I think. His planetary is a painful. Where's your medivac? Oh no, you don't have one. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, that's the issue. Mm. Okay, if you are in a position like this, what you want to do before attacking the planetary, your tanks, should you, you can try to kill the SUVs with the tanks. So even if the tank, if you position the tank in a way that it can reach the far, the, the, uh, the, how do I put this? The most far away edge of the planetary, like the bot in, in this case, the bottom right corner of the planetary. If mm -hmm. you can hit with the tanks, the SUVs on that spot, it, the tanks are still, uh, away from the planetary, so out of range, so the planetary can't hit them, but you can clear the SUVs repairing the planetary and then attack the planetary itself. Like uh. that you are burning minerals and gas, which is nice, but you will never kill the planetary. I would go for the SEVs. So you need to attack click them, right click them, whatever, only with the tanks. Yeah. Kill the SEVs and then go for the planetary. Because right now you are just attacking the planetary. It's nice, you are dealing damage, it costs some resources. But with the help of the Vikings, he can clear it. And you could have killed maybe 10 or 12 hey, SUVs. Alex, Alex um, I think something's happening to the Skype call. Oh no. I, I can't, can't quite make out what you're saying. Okay, that's not good. Oh. Well, now you're back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyways. Uh... Yeah, I was, I was just saying that with the Vikings and such, he could clear the position now. And you dealt basically no real damage. If you would have killed the SUVs, he would have been in a worse spot. In this game, it doesn't matter at all. He's on five, four command centers, and he has no base to mine, basically. Just as natural. You have one right here. It takes it just a while to close it out. 
But I don't think that there's much to say in this game anymore. Just just a matter of time until you win. Yeah. So you you spot his space. That's nice. You're still no oh no. You're two two. Okay, that's good. But I want to see how many resources you did lose in comparison of him. So let's just jump shortly to the end of this. I think now you got it. Okay. So overall you lost almost 6 thousand resources more than him. It's not too bad. I thought it would have been worse. But yeah. Mm. He never went for many marines. That's a problem for him. But let's not focus on him. Let's focus on you. So in, in this game, yeah, the 1-1-1 one, one, one can be nice as a starting thing. You need to go for the starport then. ASAP. That's very important. So... Either one 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 with two gas or one rex expand. Oh, did you say it's viable to do a gas first expand, gas rex expand, or, or not? Um, gas rex and rex gas are both possible, and they are both viable at all. So you can go with gas first, or you go I mean, with. Would that allow me, you think, to, to kind of maintain what I'm doing, but without the the um, the extra mm. gas? Or would you say, don't do what I'm doing at all? In that <laughs> I would say, what you are doing is fine, but then you need to commit to it uh -huh. completely. Um, if you go for only one gas... You can still do what you did, but then without the cyclone, you won't have enough gas for the cyclone. Yeah. So you would have, you would need to stick with two Reaper and a Hellion instead of the cyclone. Yeah. Yeah. See, I guess the the issue, um, and I've, I've said I've said this a little bit more um, before, is that in the early game i'm just i feel like i'm so open to so many things that i, I kind of just try to give myself some breathing room so even though i, I floated gas in this game mm -hmm. the the idea is that i don't know exactly what's coming but i have the gas there if i had wanted to do something different um so for instance when when i scout if for some reason early, early in the game when i scout early in the game depending on what i see um, I might decide to um, to throw down a starport first and then go for a command center. But if I only take one gas and I effectively am committing myself to a, a particular build and mm -hmm. I can't modify it so much. So it's one of those things where by taking that second gas, I, I kind of have more options available as to how I want to modify my build, even though it, it has kind of a built-in deficiency or inefficiency rather mm -hmm. and, and um, if you go for the one rex expand you won't stick on one gas for a long time basically you get the second gas with the factory together so it's like going for factory uh, I mean barracks gas or gas rex it doesn't matter too much uh, Reaper, and as soon as you can afford it, the factory with the second gas, right after then the starport, and from there you can go either into tanks, cyclones, vikings, liberator, banji, or raven as well. It's just a little bit later, but mm -hmm. you will have the command center ready in time, and by the time he strikes at your door, you should have enough units to defend whatever he gets to you, but then of course you need to scout what's coming. Yeah, that's the tight spot. That's the difference. You need to identify exactly what's coming to be prepared. If you manage to do that, then you're ahead by a lot. Mm -hmm. That's that's the difference. So you can do what you did so far, but then you need to commit to it and potentially deal damage if he's going for Rex expand. 
or you switch it up and go for Rex Expand yourself and play a little bit less aggressive style and your aggression comes in the mid to late game, like in the early mid game. There is then when you can start dropping, be in his face, on his side of the map. Yeah. Okay. Are you still in this game? Oh, yeah, I can leave it. Sorry. Yes. So we can maybe hop into one of those TVCs. How, how confident are you currently in, in TVC? Um, fairly confident. Um, oh, so well, I, I should... It depends. Um, if I, I typically do a, a, um, a 2 one, one and if I execute it well, then um, I, I feel very comfortable in mm -hmm. that matchup. Um, regardless of how they open, I feel comfortable. The, the issue is that when I get to the late game in mm -hmm. TVC, yeah. it gets very difficult for me. Uh, usually, uh, usually if it gets in the late game, I'm going to lose. Okay. There, there's, a certain, there's a certain point, and I know even if we're even or I'm a little bit ahead, if we get to like the the 15 16 minute mark and i'm not closing it out then i, I kind of just know that that it's all going to kind of go south from there <laughs> mm -hmm. okay i see yeah the late game is, is difficult in that part that you you suddenly when when he hits when the circ hits the late game and gets, for for instance, his Ultralisks out. Suddenly, all your army gets... It, it loses a lot of value. And then you need to... Uh, to change the approach on the game drastically. Mm, uh, if he goes for Ultralisks, normally... Then he won't have too many Mutalisks around. In... In a normal game, I would say. Uh, so that's that's the point where you want to start. Depending on where you stay, keep him on his side of the map with multi drops. Force mm -hmm. him to split. Force him so that he's not able to move across with his huge ultralisk link bane flood. Yeah. Because you will need time to set up. <laughs> The, the huge bunch of Marauder, maybe Ghost or Liberator, depending on what you choose. You need that time. So, as soon as... Against Broodlords it can work as well as somehow, because Broodlords are not very mobile units. But so is it is the proper thing to do with Broodlords to to pick up and and drop? Because that's usually what I, I try to do. Because if because I, I can't hold them back, right? Yeah. <laughs> if he has them out and I'm not ready for them. Then... Sure. Yeah. That's that's why you drop. Exactly. Mm, if there are many mutalisks or or corruptor out, then it's a little bit more difficult because it 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 forces you. It requires you. To be aware of where his army is, where his mutalisk are. Same like in TVT, you need to know his doom drop, where is his army. Same in TVC then as well. Um, if you drop your units and you don't know if it's safe and you waste them, you throw them away, you put them into the meat grinder in a worst case scenario, then you, in, instead of giving your time, buying your time, you just limit the window you try to create even more. That's the difficulty in TVC if he has a lot of mutilus and overlords spread out and sees every of uh, any of your movements. That's the point where it gets really difficult but you need you need to give yourself the time and there, there are two different approaches in the late game. Either you play hyper aggressive but that requires a lot of multitasking and don't throw away your units or you try to somehow, with those small little drops and pokes, give you enough time to bunker up, fortify one position mm, where he needs to attack. 
That would be your best case scenario with turrets, liberator, ghost, planetary fortress, widow mines. And then you play around, you have the stormant then going on. And slowly but surely you will start to trade away your marines. Switch them, not completely, but to a, to a huge portion with liberator ghost, uh, marauder, widow mines, medivacs. That would be... Raven, not too many, not not really, but just switch to a high value composition where he needs to attack you and you need to force him to attack into you. And if he does this, then that's the time where you hold on and when he retreats, then you give, then you get the big punch. When he retreats and you have ghosts, multiple snipes going on, killing everything. The problem with yeah. ghosts is they, the snipe gets cancelled when they take attack damage or any damage at all. So ghosts are really tricky to to use. They they are also not really good against banelings, so not many player can use ghosts to its efficiency. The snipe ability is awesome. It deals hey, I, I can't again. Understand what you're saying anymore? Maybe we should uh, end the call and restart it. Uh, okay, so just the call, cancel and restart? Well, I don't know. Every every time I mention it, then I can suddenly hear you again. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should do it anyways, because there for like a good 15 seconds, you were completely, um, uh, your voice was completely lacking. Okay, yeah, no problem. So, just wait for the Skype. I don't know what's wrong with Skype here. Hope it will be fixed now. I can cancel this one. Okay. Alright, let's see if this does it. Yeah, I, I hope so. Okay. Okay. Mm, what? Let, let me see what happens here. So the first thing is this map is super big which is not really nice. What did get killed? Some circlings. Okay. I, um, I think your timings are quite off with this build order. By a lot. Oh uh, really? Oh yeah, yes, so definitely. I, I never um, I never memorized the 2-1-1 exactly as it was on say paper mm. uh, but I just watched other people oh, yeah. do it and oh, wow. got kind of the gist of it and then I assumed I was doing it correctly when I was executing it in such a way that mm -hmm. uh, I had the correct like I wasn't floating anything but yes. it, it, could, it could be wrong no no the, the basic idea is right but it's so much what you need to remind and to keep track of when you execute this build your draw basically is one minute too late, which is not good. Ah, we are. Look at that. It's not good either. So, nope. Okay. Let, let's let's go over and let. Okay. Let's see. I think I know why this is happening. So far, it's looking okay. Okay. So one of the reasons why your build doesn't work out as it should is because of the SCV scout. But uh -huh. that's that's okay. I mean SCV scouting a, a Zerg is not bad. I try to avoid it if I can because I want to have the timings as crisp as possible. On the other hand if you have to face in your league, I don't know, lots of one base ravage all in link drop, pain link drop, cheeses I don't know stuff like that. Then it definitely makes sense. I can't. I can't hear you again, Alex. What's wrong with this Skype? I'm not sure. I don't know. I never have those problems when I Skype with my friends. That's strange. Hmm. Maybe I should close everything else. Let's see. So let's get that down and that down. Maybe that fixes it. What I was saying is um, I want to have my timings as crisp as possible so I don't SCV scout and 
if you face a lot of all-in from Zergs like Baneling Busts, Ravager attacks out of one base, then it definitely makes sense to scout with the SEV. If you don't face it, you not really need to SEV scout. You can play around it without SEV scouting. So, so here's the deal with the build order. Normally, if you watch any professional play... Okay, you're not a professional, but let's just assume. Now would be the time you want to have the second barracks being produced. Like, now it should be thrown down, like in three, three seconds. At 150. Mm -hmm. uh, second racks at 150. And your... Oopsie. And your second barracks comes down way later. At least now you could throw down the barracks. One 155 would still be quite good. Uh -huh. And it lines up. It's 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 fine. So now you would get the the barracks done. Okay. So this barracks is 10 seconds too late. Mm, you also get the reactor down and ASAP, as soon as possible, the next supply depot. So, this SCV right now, which you are producing, oops, ah, come on. Let's see. This SCV which you are now producing will be the SCV for the next supply depot. Okay. Okay. So that's that. You also get the reactor done ASAP. Okay, there you go. So here you go with the supply depot. Fine. That 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 fits. And now the factory. In this build, you are base. So the refinery can either be before the factory or after you throw it down. Um, both is viable. I don't think it makes a huge difference. I normally do it like you did here, gas before the factory. So that's good, I would say. Little bit of scouting. Dun -dun -dun. Tech lab, okay. Orbital command. Okay. Next thing is let's see. Your stim pack. How long does it take for you to research stim? So immediately after the tech lab finishes, those are clutch timings you want to hit with your um two one one build. Also the mule. So there's still a lot of macro improvement going on which you can have. This st so stim immediately and constant constant marine production. Yeah. Mm, even if you have to skip SCVs or delay. Okay. Some if if you are a professional player, you will have Perfect worker stacking on the mineral patches. Um, you won't need the SEV scout. Your building placement will be optimal, so the pathway to the mineral patches again are the shortest and so on. Those are small things which can make later on a huge difference. You don't need to focus on it now, but at least have the new throw down at 50 energy and yeah, you're still, you're, you're still not researching stim. Stim ASAP. Yeah, so uh, one reason everything seems just slightly delayed in this game is because I'm also trying to do things with my Reaper. Yeah. And I, I'm terrible at, um, at multitasking. Yes. Uh, so having this Reaper check this third and then pop in and try to snipe a drone mm. uh, and then get back out. It, yes, I, I think see. it's something that I, I definitely want to be able to do, and I can only do it if I practice <laughs> it. But it it makes the rest of the, it it causes the, the rest of this build to be a little less crisp. Mm. So here is where you need to set priorities. 
And I would say, instead of trying to be fancy with the Reaper and getting a drone, just send it with the shift command around, scout, keep the, the Reaper, think of it. Do you want to have your drop hit 30, hit at the perfect time where it should hit? Or do you want to snipe a drone? Mm -hmm. I would rather go with the perfectly hit timing which can end the game, potentially. A drone kill will most likely never win you the game. But if you hit this timing, it probably will. So mm -hmm. here, I would say set priorities. Reaper, for now, you don't have the multitasking yet. So try, don't try to force it. Reaper is for scouting. That's his role for now. Not too much harassment. Just scouting mm -hmm. and map control. And then focus on the timing, which can win you the game on its own. Yeah. Because yes, you, you, you got three drones so far, but the drop will hit 30 seconds too late. And with yeah. this drop potentially you could... And still, your Reaper didn't even scout a uh, scout the layer tag. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that's the I, difficulty here. Yeah, I I didn't expect him to put the Roach War, and if he made one down here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that was bad on my part. I should have at least hoped towards the natural to see that he was doing yes. a one-one with I roaches. I mean, if if there is no no third base. Uh, at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Check. Mm -hmm. If there is a gold base, maybe check that as well. Um, on some maps, for instance, there could be a gold base near your side of the map. And mm -hmm. then he will use this and most likely it will be a natural then, but still, he could use this for a huge ling, speedling roach attack, for instance. So mm -hmm. if there is a gold base on the map and the Zerg is not playing by on the book or by the book, then check the gold base as well, maybe with a Reaper or so. Okay. Just just to be sure he's not cheesing or going for a big push. Here, of course, Reaper. Th the problem right, so is... Yeah. So 520, I load up my medevacs. What What is the timing that I should should be in my medevacs going across the map with this build? Mm, if, you, if you hit everything perfectly, you can have the medevacs load up and boost out at 4 minutes 40. Oh, okay. Um, but that's only if you hit everything perfectly. I'm not able to do this. Um, but I can, I can put it down. Med two medivacs and 16 marines leave base. Um, if you hit 5 minutes, 5 zero, 0 that is totally fine as well. Okay. Mm. Then you will hit right now at least his base, can trade queens, circlings. You just need to make sure never lose those marines. If you lose those initial marines or medivacs, you are so far behind, normally. Uh -huh. um, you lose map control, he can do whatever he wants, and you need to bunker up hard, which is never what you want to do against Zerg. Yeah, that's if I lose these two medivacs, is that what you said? Then it's basically game over. Yeah. It's so hard to come back because what you want to do with those medivacs later on with the next two medivacs go for a big push. That's so with those units you shave off some circlings, force him to make units instead of drones, maybe kill a queen, deny his creep. But mm -hmm. the big push so you want to weaken his defenses so when the additional two medivacs you go up to four medivacs and then you hit hard potentially and maybe even kill his third base if you can or you do a one two punch two medivacs here two medivacs here something like that yeah you need to keep those units alive if possible the marines and the medivacs oh and also when stim finishes combat shields 
-hmm. immediately. Mm, you have the gas right now, you can go for it. So, also very important. Combat shields after step. Yes. So let's see. Let's just have a small overview of what happens here. So that was not too bad. What you could have done here, I don't know where you were focusing. If you go in like that, stutter step into him, he got 1-1, one, one. that's bad for you. But still you could have traded, try to focus fire his drones if you want to. Otherwise I wouldn't take a straight engagement against those roaches. But it's still okay. It wasn't that many though. Was... Yes, if you would have focused fire it would have been better. But, meh. It's okay I guess. Oh, losing all those units, that's unnecessary. So by the time you see him going for Roach Ravager, you should immediately lift the factory, go for tanks. Get a second factory, go for tanks. Oh, okay. Uh, get the gases going. Potentially... Yes, get that base for more gas, you want to go up to 6 gas, and then go for 8 barracks with four tech, 5 to 4 tech labs rest reactor for a 1 to 1 ratio of marine marauder. Against Roach Ravager you need to play different. More tanks, no widow mines, and way more marauder. Wait, I can't, I can't hear you again? Against Roach Ravager, you want to play differently. No, you're, you're not coming through at all. That's so bad. So I just write it down. Against Roach Ravager. Ah, oh, you're back. <laughs> get tanks and one vol marine marauder ratio. So, no widow mines. Yes. That's it. And two factories. You said no widow mines? Not against... Uh, okay. What about liberators? Are, are they worth it? Not really. Later on, when you have range, yes. But I would... Maybe I would go up to two liberator and try to harass him and force his road ravager to stay back at home. And then... But go, go for tanks. You need tanks. Tanks are way better. Okay. They they need four bias to get cleared instead of three like the Liberator. They have splash damage, more range. They are overall better against Roach Ravager. Yeah. So the the question is, let me just see here. Mm, okay. Maybe get rid of the music for now. Let me just have a look what's going on. Okay. So the thing is, basically, the quiet would be done already, but we're only halfway through this. So, do you do you want to continue, or would you be fine with how it's? looking so far uh, with, I'd like to see the um, the end of this game with you but uh, then ended at that is that possible yeah okay let's let's go through fast when you have one one against You are on 6 barracks instead of 8, so that's something. And yeah, you still go for Villa Mines and Liberator. Tanks would have been better. 
Also, if you do stuff like this, always get medivacs with it so you can evac. Yeah. I like that you go for his base on the right hand side while pushing on the left hand side. That's a, one, a very good one punch, one two punch move. But it's not. Is it enough? Uh, almost. Yeah, here with 2 2, I think you would have won this battle. Your upgrades were a little bit late here. But overall you're killing him. Uh, he has some kind of bank but it's not enough to keep up and because you're always on his side of the map he's never counter attacking with uh, yeah. circling swirl for example. So you are in charge, you win this game. But still I think with tanks you would have had a little bit of okay. an easier time. The thing is, tanks are better for longer battles and Roach Ravager engagements tend, tend to be longer. Uh, if, with Ling Bane, Mutalisk fights are way shorter, so that's why you get Widow Mines, as well as because they can hit Mutalisk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think with the next move you win. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. That's that was just him. Yeah. Upgrades, macro, a little bit of uh, decision making and and army composition, but overall that was quite good, I would say. Taking bases quite nicely. Yeah, not not too bad, not too bad at all. But then again, eight barracks instead of six would have been better. Okay. So eight racks, two or three factories, one escort. Um. When do you typically recommend um, someone drop down their fourth? Because I, I'm comfortable up to three, mm -hmm. and then the fourth base, I, I feel like I'm almost always late on. Yep, uh, you definitely are because I am as well. Um, <laughs> fourth base should at latest being produced at ten minutes. So start it. At, at yeah. The yeah, okay. better would be maybe 9.30, maybe even 9, zero, zero. It depends on the game, but that yeah. would be yeah. best. Okay, all right, well, great. Awesome. So, yeah, mules, macro. But overall, it's not looking too bad. I think if you, if you first of all, work on... What? Norbeck? No, she's with Sam. Uh, macro, yeah timings. If you work on, on your, first of all on your macro, transition and a little bit generating vision, you should see some improvements pretty fast, I think. Okay. Cool. Alright. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I hope I could help you. Let me know how it went for you uh, maybe next week or so that I get some how it's called feedback on how you are doing. I just had someone who went within a week from gold to he's almost platinum two now. Oh nice. nice. Yeah, it's it's possible. He's he's practicing a lot, uh, getting the timings done, hitting the benchmarkers. I will coach him tomorrow again, so we will see how that goes. But mm -hmm. yeah, if if you put in practice the nice thing is if you have someone who is telling you what you can do and you just do it you see how easy it is to some point to improve quite fast. Later on it will get more difficult and that's the point where you will be soon. But that's another story. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
So, best of luck for your games. Have a nice right. weekend. You too. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. Hey yo there, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support me, simply hit the thumbs up button. Do you have any wishes, feedback or suggestions, put them into the comments below. You may also subscribe if you're new to the channel. I wish you a wonderful and stress-free day. Take care. Bye bye.